Well, let's bring in our panel this hour, our political strategists Graham Morris and Bruce Hawker. Good to see you both this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I want to get your thoughts on the news poll out today, and we can bring up the numbers again. Uh, tightening, uh, Graham, is clearly the word here. Um, but given this was one of Bill Shorten's worst weeks last week, should the Turnbull government be a little concerned it's still behind? Uh, the answer's yes. Um, but, you know, the polls, polls are a bit all over the place. We had one last week which said Bill Shorten would be Prime Minister by about 15 seats. Now, if there was a poll, according to this poll, if there was an election last weekend, both leaders, the Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader, <coughs> would be talking very, very nicely to some back to, to some cross benches. Uh, the co on that poll, the coalition would lose a handful of seats, four, five, six, seven, and that means it, it would become very, very tight. Now. Uh, that's what it said. But last week's poll said, hey, Bill Shorten's going to win in a landslide. So, you know, we're a long way away, I think, <clears throat> from sorting out just where the electorate is and the electorate settling down before anyone could ever think of running an early election. And, you know, all of this gibberish about let's have the... Uh, if some of the by-elections go all right, let's have an early poll. Well, let me come back to that, because it's a really interesting point. A lot of people, uh, including in Labor, think that, you know, if, if, if the government picks up a seat, they'll run to an, a general election. But, Bruce, just on the polls, mm. and what do they show... Because we shouldn't look at just one in snapshot, but when we look across the trend, what are they telling you at the moment? Well, I, that's a nationwide poll. So it, it, it suggests nationally it's a, it's a very tight race. What we are seeing, though, are regional and state uh, variations which are quite significant. For example, Labor's doing very well in Western Australia, despite that poor by-election result at the state level uh, a week or two ago. They are doing very well at the state level and they will be focusing on picking up four or five seats in WA alone. Um, where it's a bit more tricky is states like Queensland, um, where it's, uh, their vote seems to be a bit more depressed. So. You can't just look at it on a nation-wide basis. You have to look at it state by state. And I think when you drill into that, uh, you'll see that um, you know, New South Wales is obviously always very critically important and might be one of the reasons why the Prime mm. Minister's out there today. Well, they were both there today, yeah. uh, both in marginal uh, New South Wales territory uh, yes. today. That's a good point, Bruce. You, yeah. you can't, you know, while those by-elections matter a hell of a lot... You don't want to ignore where elections are normally won and lost. That's exactly right. And I can tell you from having you know, been intimately involved in a national campaign, getting around all those seats, even the marginal ones, uh, is a big challenge. And, uh, of course, uh, Bill uh, shortens up in the Central Coast today and you've got two very, very tight seats in Dobell and Robertson there. Mm. Uh, or across Western Sydney, uh, the Prime Minister has to be really focusing on any number of seats uh, there that if they uh, if they topple would topple him as well. So I think it's still an uphill and look, race. His childcare message today is one that will resonate in Western Sydney, right? Because it's about yep. putting more money in the pockets of you know, working families at lower and middle incomes. Yep, it, it's it, it's a it's a tough uh, place to be, Western Sydney, when you know both parents have to work in order to make ends meet. That means childcare has to be factored into your expenses. So I I can see why he's there, and I can see why Bill Shorten is up on the central coast as well. Um, that doesn't mean that and they It's an interesting announcement there. Sorry to interrupt, but mm. he announced a multi-storey car park, which sounds like a very local announcement, but I was talking to someone in Labor the other day who made the point, you, 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 they'll sit down with a group of people and say, you know, what do you want for your health system and so on, and quite often it's, we want a better car park at yeah. the hospital or at the train station. Well, it's, it's, it's very... And Very what, basic stuff that makes that, a big difference. Absolutely, and, and quite often it's a car park that we don't have to pay for when we visit. You know, that's yeah, the sort of thing that right. really upsets people. It gets right up people's yeah. noses. So, yeah, think, uh, think uh, nationally and act locally. I think that's a very important message for all politicians. Mm. Yeah, Graham, um, I guess you're not surprised. They're spending what time they can in those parts of New South Wales, but they'll, they'll have to shift to those by-election seats pretty soon. Well, that's true, but I can assure you there's plenty of big wigs in the by-election seats. And it's, it's sort of a campaign director's nightmare because a leader always wants to be in the by-election seats because their future, to some extent, depends on them. Um,
but then you, then you have the foreign minister, you, you have agriculture, you have small, small business. All of a sudden, if you're not careful, you're going to have seven or eight people mm. in a marginal seat falling over each other. Would there other. be one director for all five or a director in each... Uh, marginal, e each of these by-election seats. And just on that point about how often you really want the leader there. Um, well, you know, the big one is, the, is, is sort of the local media. And, OK, they all have overall daily newspapers, but most of them have a weekly or a tri-weekly. So you, you've got to make sure that once a week there is a figurehead there who can drag the candidate on the front page, either because of something interesting they're doing or something interesting they're saying. Now, after that, everything, anything is a bonus. But for the people on the ground, it's really quite hard if you get four ministers turn up and you've got to have decent events and media events for them. It's, it's hard. And also, three of them are, are redundant. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, Bruce, what, <laughs> what do you think about that, running these? And they're very different seats, we should point out. The WA ones, oh, yeah. Labor will hold, uh, but it's Longman and Braddon that they really need to concentrate on. Yeah. Um, if you were running Labor's campaign, uh, you know, would you want Bill Shorten there a lot or just strategically? Uh, what would be your call? Uh, I think strategically. I think they do a lot of things remotely these days, which, uh, you know, didn't really happen previously. You know, they do these robocalls and all sorts of things, which can sometimes be successful, can sometimes get you into a bit of strife. But uh, they, they do do messaging into those electorates uh, in a way that you know, no-one else sees unless you pick up the phone and, and receive the call. Uh, so there's that. Um, I think the leaders, the leader will be trying to spread himself around the seats that, uh, where he thinks he can make the most impact. Uh, but as Graham says, you do have other shadows and ministers who will be in those seats. The party secretary in Canberra will be working very closely with the, um, w w with the state secretaries in New South Wales, Queensland and, um, and, and, and uh, Tasmania particularly mm. to see that those, uh, you know, they're going well. So I think that's the way in which this campaign will, will operate. We've still got a month to go, so there's plenty of time, um, you know, to really there annoy is. the hell out of the electorate between now and then. <laughs> and, and that's one of the things you've got to be careful about. People have got to go about their lives and uh, they don't want to be stumbling over politicians yep, and candidates every time. From... Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Graham, just to your point earlier, Malcolm Turnbull again said today the election will be next year. Some clearly don't believe that. Some think, you know, if he does get, uh, you know, um, all his Christmases on uh, Super Saturday and picks up both Braddon and Longman, then we'll be off to an election pretty promptly after that. Why do you think that's a bad idea? Because Malcolm Fraser tried it and got his backside kicked in. You know, Malcolm Fraser misread the Flinders by-election, called an early election, Labor Party changed leaders on the spot and Malcolm Fraser came second. Um, Bob Hawke ran early and, and Andrew Peacock nearly killed him. It, it surprised everybody, including me. Um, the electorate is not ready yet for a general election. And, and what would be the excuse? Hey, I did well in the by-election, let's have an election. <laughs> really? Mm. Well, um, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm sure no. they'd dress it up a little better than that. But... Yeah, I know. But, but you know, <laughs> the electorate's not stupid. Um, uh, they would say, oh, you know, Mr Turnbull thinks he can win, he's going early. Um, no, 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 no. I don't think the polls, the electorate, the policies, the mood, the positioning of Bill Shorten, it's not ready and it won't be by September. Um, you know, February, March, April, somewhere around there still makes orthodox sense to me. And, you know, we saw last week, David, the importance of positioning your opponent. Now, big, you know, Bill was a bit of a deal and gave himself a few uppercuts, but even so, the way the government positioned it was really important. And I hope somebody in the government's actually learnt that, yes, governing is important, yes, good policy is important, but so is positioning your opponent. And they haven't been very good at it. Yeah, I mean, look, Bruce, you've been arguing for a while that Labor would be nuts to uh, get rid of Bill Shorten and replace him with anyone. Um, after last week, is that still your view? Uh, yeah, it is. I think it's, it's a very dangerous thing to do so close to an election. Um, and I, I don't see much upside in doing that, frankly. I think you would, 
you would just create division in a way that we haven't seen in the Labor Party ever since uh, Bill took over as leader in 2013. That's one of the great strengths of the party in that time. So I'd be very uh, worried if they were to go down that path. I think they, even if there was not a great result in Longman or Braden, I still think it would be better to stick with that and go um, to the election with the current team in place. Um, and I don't think that Prime Ministers, as a rule, really have the courage, if you want, uh, if, you, if you like, to actually go in there and have an early election if they're still behind in the polls. It's a really brave thing to do. You've got to ask yourself, why would you do it? I've... Well, Howard did it, didn't he? He went into a couple of campaigns behind. Well, uh, he may have. And, 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 you know, and, and the cards fell well for him in 2001, particularly with Tampa. Um, so, you know, we have seen examples of him um, you know, getting lucky, I guess, in an election campaign. And it might have been informed luck, I don't know. But I don't think it's, a, it's the sort of thing that I've seen um, Prime Ministers and Premiers do up, uh, up close very often. I think they're very reluctant to go to an election unless they've got a very handy lead. And even if Labor were not to be successful in either Longman or Braddon or both, I don't think that necessarily reflects the mood of the broader uh, electorate, and I think we need to be very careful about assuming that it does. I, it, but, but, Bruce, you would agree that, that if Mr Shorten did lose two by-elections and all of that um, momentum then switches, and we've got front pages for weeks and weeks and weeks saying Mr Shorten in trouble, government, government on the ascendancy, if that reflected in the polls for a month or two... I, I, think, I think some of the Labor colleagues would be starting to have a look at alternates because they can smell the, the, the benches, they can smell the white cars. And I just don't think any loyalty to Bill Shorten um, is going to get in the way of what they think could be victory. Yeah, well, and, and, and look... True. Bruce, I was going to say, that, yeah. that, that's, that's Labor's, you know, history, isn't it? I mean... Uh, uh, Kim Beasley, who knows whether he would have beaten John Howard or not, but Labor clearly got anxious at the end there. They shifted to, um, you know, the Rudd-Gillard right. team mm. there to guarantee that they would win the election. Yep. Uh, you know, similarly, in uh, knocking off Julie Gillard for Kevin Rudd, they, they knew the chances at the election were pretty dire. So, mm. you know, th th it does come into play, doesn't it, the chances Look, of um, winning an election? It does, but it's very hard when you're in opposition to call the shots around those things because you're not actually determining when the election's going to be held. Um, at least in the case of uh, Rudd when he took over from Gillard, we knew that we had some control over the timing of the election. Um, you don't actually do that from opposition. So it's a factor that has to be considered by any opposition team if they were serious about uh, changing leaders. And I just don't know that uh, it's worth the, uh, the grief that would flow from it because... Um, you, you would also have questions about whether the rank and file should be involved in the uh, replacement of the or, or the vote for the leader if there was a contested leadership, which you know you can't rule out. So there's all sorts of factors which would become um, would have to come into play, and I just don't know that it's worth uh, the effort, frankly, to cause that level of disruption. Um, yeah, you know, Labor's got some pretty good policies. They've been in uh, in a commanding position for most of the last a term. And, um, and so I think that de does demonstrate that the electorate is um, dissatisfied with uh, the Turnbull team. And that means that, you know, anything could happen in an election campaign, even if Turnbull were to suddenly, you know, push himself ahead in the polls. I think division is death in politics and we just need to avoid it uh, at all costs. Just, yeah. All right, just a quick one before we go. David Lionhelm, Graham, should he apologise? Um, he really should. Look, I, I've had a few cases where my tongue has got ahead of my brain and it's really important that you, as soon as you can, you just, you just eat your tongue, just <laughs> say sorry and move on. But be fair to him about it. You know, he ought to be sorry. Yeah, Bruce? Same. If you made a mistake... Apologise, and uh, and it'll be over in 24 hours. If you don't, it'll linger, and that's when it really hurts. That's what we're seeing. Bruce Hawker, Graham Morris, thank you both very much. We'll catch up next week. See you, mate. All right, quick break. Back with the last word. <laughs>